Welcome back. Next session up is Dan presenting Shashlik. Well, let's just have a class on real Linux. Let's see what that means. I'm quite curious. I have been running apps on my desktop. So, welcome, Dan. Right. You can hear me? Good. Right. So, Shashlik. In the beginning, all right, I, I'm a bird sometimes. Um, right, my name is Dan Lehner for Fred Jensen, and I've been with KDE for some time now, very nearly a decade. Um, I'm a master's of software construction with some crazy title that didn't fit on my diploma. Um, and uh, over time, I started my involvement in KDE in the Amarok community, but since then I've been working uh, with uh, Caligra, and I've been working with the Gluon team, and most recently, I became an employee of Blue Systems, in which capacity I am on this stage today. Um, so, as a base concept of this, I want to explain why Blue Systems is interested in doing something like Shashlik. So, the plasma phone stuff that you've been uh, that everybody's been very excited about recently has been all about getting our stuff to work on phones um, and getting the sort of the convergence is a very nice word these days uh, so getting our stuff to work on other devices is kind of where we want to be but obviously the opposite is also true so we want to get stuff that currently runs on phones, all of these apps that are available there. We want to have that also available on, uh, on desktops, which is the current primary goal of Shashlik. Um, yeah, so it will eventually run on phones, but right now that's not, that, it's not the prime goal. We will get there, but it'll take a little while. So, first of all, now Android, everyone will tell you in particular, the, the Linux Foundation will tell you that Linux runs on billions of devices out there. Uh, the, ter the problem is they run Android, which technically is Linux, but not really. Um, it's Linux in the sense that there is a kernel, but everything from there and up is different, which is lovely. Uh, you have Binder, which is an IPC uh, system inter-process communication system, which was developed for BIOS, if I remember correctly, um, which is old but very, very efficient. Um, it is not very popular in security circles because it's basically a siphon directly into the kernel. However, it is now available in the mainline Linux kernel, so we can work around that for now. Um, then you have Surface Flinger, which is something of an issue uh, in that Surface Flinger is traditionally the way to access the hardware, where we have other ways of doing that on, on Linux. We have something called Open Drivers, uh, which Android hasn't really worked out yet. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and of course, there's the whole way that Android applications get run, which is through the Dalvik runtime, or the, and the new version, which would be the Android runtime, um, uh, which is something called SIGIT. Um, basically, the idea is you have the central virtual machine, which contains all of your system processes, and then any application will request a copy of that runtime and then applications run inside that. Um, now, the problem. <laughs> Obviously, there are a lot of applications out there, and we would like those on our systems as well. That's the, that's the main issue that uh, I've, I've been talking with some people recently, and they were asking, so why, why, why are you doing this? Why would we want? all of these apps 
on our perfectly functional Linux desktops when we have all of, all of the content in the uh, Ubuntu repositories and we have all of the applications in OpenSUSE and we have OBS and all of these wonderful things. The problem is they're not the things that a lot of people out there want. People want Candy Crush. <laughs> um, and that's not really available yeah, there. So, um, yeah, and the problem of is being that none of the ones on Android currently run on a normal Linux. Uh, you've got a couple of options for doing that right now. There's the Android emulator itself, which requires you to install the Android SDK, and it is terribly awkward to get anything to run inside it. And they're all virtual machines. There's the ACL as well, which is also a virtual machine. And, you know, they all come with that weight that a virtual machine comes with. They are emulating a processor, and there's a virtual computer running inside your computer, which, given the nature of a lot of these applications, would potentially not be that much of an issue, but we'd rather not. Um, it's also, you know, awkward to do. Uh, then there's the remote run option, which is stuff like, yeah, appetizing uh, manual, uh, which is basically you put an APK uh, on some server somewhere and they run it for you. So, you know, the popular other people's computer issues. Um, and then you've got web browsers. I understand uh, Firefox are working on something similar, so it will run on Firefox OS, but there's the one that's was in the press recently called uh, Arc, which, run, which basically means you wrap Android applications in something which makes them run on Chrome. But if you don't want to run Chrome, then you can't run that. So what we're doing is taking the Android stack and removing the bits of it that make it really awkward to run on Linux. Um, so we're taking out the OpenGL code. Uh, there's a lot of weirdness in that, which means that you can't use the same libraries that exist on Android on Linux. Um, and yeah, it's, it, it's terribly awkward. But that's why these things take time to get to work. Um, the base concept then is that because this is running Android on a real Linux system, not inside an emulator, not inside a web browser, not on other people's computers or whatever, we have the ability to really deeply integrate stuff. So that's what we want to do as well. Um, and then, of course, Surface Flinger itself is there. We can't really very easily get rid of that uh, just because there, there is the possibility of, of getting rid of Surface Flinger if you only run pure Java-based applications in Android. Then you can do it. That's what the people in Genfroid have done. Uh, good friends of ours. Well, well, good work, people. Um, and uh, yeah, we, yes, we work with the Genfroid people. Lovely guys. Um, uh, but Surface Flinger itself is required for getting anything that's based on the native SDK in Android to run because they interface directly with Surface Flinger. So we need Surface Flinger and what we've done there is that we have ripped out all of the hardware abstraction stuff and then that hole that was left behind was shaped pretty much like Wayland. So we put Wayland into that. Um, now, an interesting thing about that is the uh, code that existed there. Um, no, no, sorry. The code that existed before. People have done things with Wayland and Surface Flinger and trying to get the two to work together before. Uh, case in point would be the Yola phone. Sailfish OS is uh, basically doing that. The Plasma phone itself is doing that. Um, but what that does is it's putting Wayland on top of Surface Flinger, which then handles the hardware bits, 
we don't do that here. We just have to have some EGL surfaces to paint on, um, which we then get out of Wayland, and Surface Thing can then work with them. This sounds very simple. It's not, <laughs> unfortunately, but um, yeah, uh, that's, that's the current process. And then we have currently a small application that handles this. Uh, basically, there's a lot of services and things that need to run. Uh, this is not a final UI. Uh, we'll need to speak with the visual design group uh, once we are a little bit closer to having something that works properly. So, uh, obviously, work in progress there. Um, but uh, the idea is, obviously, that all of that functionality will be hidden. And the idea is that run, run an APK button up there is not a run APK button. It's a double click on an APK. Installer launches, application shows up in your, uh, in your menu. And so the idea is to have Android applications, of course, running as full proper citizens on a real normal Linux desktop. So yeah, that will eventually go away, but right now it's a useful little tool. Um, so a little demo. Now let's see if I can get this to work. Where's my mic? Where's my mic going? There is my mic. There's that controller, and there is Western, which is a uh, Wayland um, compositor that runs on top of X Windows. So, useful little tool for us to do some testing on. Now, I click Start All Services, and a black screen shows up. Now, something I told people sometime on Friday when we finally had a black screen showing up, that is the most exciting black rectangle I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so all of the output you can see in the background here is Android running. It's dropping events because there's no touch for Windows. There's no application running, so there's no input window. But that is, uh, that is a running Android system, or that is a running Android runtime running on pure Linux. There is no hacks, uh, no changes to Linux itself. It is just Linux, standard user space. Um, one change would be Binder, but given Binder is now in the mainline kernel, that's not really a hack. Um, but yes, that is but unfortunately as uh, interesting as that demo gets. Where did my thing go? Yeah, I've, I've, uh, on account of this whole Wayland thing, I'm switching between Quins as well, so I've lost my shortcuts and I can't alt tab into the correct window. Never mind. <laughs> oh, yeah, and now key events show up as well, of course. Uh, and stop all the services. Um. I promised someone a flappy bird, so I had a flappy bird. <laughs> um, now, what's up next? Now, other than, of course, getting something, <laughs> yeah, sorry, uh, getting something installed uh, and actually having uh, a flappy bird flapping on screen and being able to play the game and all of the other things that you can do with it. Um, Okay, so my personal goal for this is something a little bit more, I guess, enterprisey. I have, 
I'm afraid, not a, uh, an open phone. I have a BlackBerry Passport. It runs BB10, and there is this lovely little application that makes it possible to mirror your uh, messaging system on there on your desktop. But that only works on Windows, on Mac OS, and on Android. So, um, but so once we have applications up and running, the all of the integration begins to become. A point. So we have all of the, it's not just frameworks, it's all the other things as well. As much as possible needs to be done through the FDO uh, specs, so all the notifications and uh, all of that stuff uh, will end up being done uh, through the proper standards, probably using uh, the KD libraries to provide the functionality. Uh, but yes, so it's all stuff like notifications and contacts, so like you integrating K people into Catholic and the task, having the task manager show uh, the windows uh, in each application rather than uh, just have a single window which contains everything, which is also a problem. App listings in the in the in your um, K menu and yeah, all of these things that make the, that, that it will eventually make the applications run as full citizens, like proper full, if you run an application, an Android application, you can only tell that there is a difference because, well, it's going to still look like an Android application, but it will run and it will show your contacts, it will show itself in the taskbar and it's in, you've lodged it through the K menu and you've, you know, all of that. Um, and then, yes, obviously, separate windows per app. Um, now, the idea for the controller is to make it a little bit more, uh, in essence, I guess, like the, um, what's that called? The settings app on Android. It has a lot of uh, detailed statistics for each application. Uh, we can't really sensibly filter that into the existing package managers, uh, but as much as possible we want in there, but some things we will need to be, we'll need to have the controller, if nothing else, for debug purposes. So, the, yeah, you can't see that because resolution, but, um, yeah. Um, and then, right now, <laughs> it's KitKat. And we want to obviously, we want to upgrade that to Android M when that's out, and then so on, uh, N, O, P, whatever, when, whenever they start coming out. Um, and then people have been asking, oh, but where do I get my APKs? How would I you know, get all of my uh, applications? All of these many, many thousands of, you know, if not hundreds of thousands of applications out there. Um, Surely you're not expecting people to go and rip them from Play Store or, uh, you know, whatever. No, the, the idea is to integrate, again, deep integration into the existing frameworks that we have. We have this wonderful little thing called Move on Discover, which is a sort of uh, centralized application portal for multiple sources. Um, and it's, you know, applications and content both. So. Uh, if we can, but for F-Droid, I don't expect it would be that much of an issue because it's all open, but the other two might be a little fun. I know that people have done it for Google Play. There are, there is Snap for BB10 and there's a Google Play uh, client type thing for Yola as well. I think the latter one is even open source, so it should be possible to get at least three apps from Google Play. Amazon, no idea. I don't believe they have an API because this is Amazon. They don't play well with others. Um, even worse than Google. Um, but uh, yes, the, the idea is to integrate as many of the existing stores out there into Moo and Discover, potentially, you know, uh, also uh, AppStream if we can get that to work. Uh, and then, obviously, bugs, 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 many bugs. And uh, yeah, uh, once we have uh, all of it done, 
goes with next thing. Bug, 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 bug hunting. So, that was a little bit faster than I expected, but questions? <laughs> Well, in that this is a Linux-based system, uh, the whole thing where you install apps through the Play Store, the way that you, you, know, you can go onto the web and go, oh, I would like this on my device, so on, uh, is a little bit different here. It doesn't quite work like that. That requires the Google services, and that's a very specific thing. But, um, well, technically, because we get the APK, I don't see that it, well, it wouldn't be impossible at least. <laughs> um, it's, it's not a really, you know, I haven't thought of that one. But yeah, I can, I can see it working at least. Like having things in the notepad, I use this notepad on my phone, I type stuff, would you? Ooh, ah, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Ooh, ah, well, that would be more a KDE Connect thing, I guess. But yeah, having, actually, that's a point. Having Shashlake integrating with KDE Connect would be really useful. Um, yeah. Not yourself. <laughs> what language is Shashlik from? Shashlik. Orkish. Uh, well, the, the, it does sound Orkish, and that would be because I believe it's Russian. Um, it's. Right, so the, the snack itself, I think, no, actually, the Shashlik name is Turkish, I'm told. Uh, but the picture I found, the, um, the Shashlik picture, that one, that picture says it was Russian. Um, it's a sort of that kind of area. I mean, it, it's it's a kebab, you know, it's a shish, it's a shish kebab basically. Uh, so you know, uh, does does anyone here have a cultural connection to Shashlik? <laughs> there you go. You would technically, well, start from the far end. Uh, if I understood the question correctly, you will be able to detect from inside your application if it's running inside Shashlik, because Shashlik has the, uh, you, you can, the same way you would detect uh, any Android build on any device. You can detect if it's running on a, uh, on a Nexus 5, or you can detect if it's a, you know, a Cyanogen or so on. You can, that information is registered as Shashlik. Uh, and Shashlik runtime inside the VM. So if you request the version information from Android, it will tell you that it's running on Shashlik. Um, what was the first one? stuff. Yes, right. So, uh, what we've discovered is that um, applications which are distributed on the uh, Play Store, at least, uh, will tell you what uh, architectures they're available for. And inside the same APK, you have libraries for uh, all of the different um, architectures. So, you know, say Flappy Bird again. Flappy Bird has uh, inside the uh, same APK you have libraries for ARM, uh, um, to two or three different versions of ARM. You've got MIPS, you've got x86, uh, and so on. So um, it's, we, and that's the thing. Shashlik is not an emulator in the same way that Wine is not an emulator. There is no hardware emulation going on here. It's an API 
uh, that runs directly on top of uh, your local native system. So it's all, if, if the application lacks x86 support, it will not run in Shaslik. Um, technically, I guess it would be possible to do, uh, but it's not really in scope at the moment at least. So yeah, um, let us get the, the proper sort of system running first and then we can look into getting, getting emulation working. Uh, my question is simple, when can I run VLC on Android on that one? Which one? VLC on Android. Um, jokes aside, ah. uh, for VLC for example, we need SDK, we need NDK, and we need also private NDK APIs. Private is a problem. And not, not an enormous problem, it's solvable, but right now it's a problem. Um, we've ported the VLC on Android in the last months to uh, Chrome, uh, Arc, uh, Android runtime on Chrome, and um, we managed to get a few things uh, on that, but yeah. um, there are APIs where you actually need private APIs. Uh, yeah. it, is it even possible at some point? It, it will eventually be possible, um, but we'll need to. We, yeah, we'll need to look at that. Right now, it's not. Yeah, it, it's not out of scope, so to say, but it is not currently possible. Um, well, yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> Obviously, some of the some some of the private stuff is Bionic. We don't have Bionic. We have. Oh, the frameworks stuff. Yes, the frameworks, private stuff, that's all there. Um, yeah, um, that, that actually, yes, that should be possible. Um, we will need to look at it, and that is one of the things that we're working on at the moment. So, yeah, but, yeah. Um, actually, let me just do this. Brim, brim, brim. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> but yes, let's talk later. Uh, so I guess this maps fine to plasma form, and then I can try any question with plasma form. Uh, right now? Okay. So plasma form. Yeah. Someone was going to ask that at some point. Nice. Right. So running it on plasma form at the moment is a problem because there is already a surface layer on plasma form because it uses libibris. Uh, which speaks to the hardware through a sort of, sort of kind of surface linger. You don't use surface linger? Are you sure? It's, there's no surface linger process running on the phone today? I'm not 100% sure, but at least it doesn't use surface linger and all our application does use surface linger. We use the hardware controller, but not surface linger. Right. If we can kill the surface flinger on plasma foam, then yes, it will be possible. Basically, the problem is that if you have lib hybrids and running with surface flinger, then the two surface flingers will be fighting over who gets to speak through binder, because it's supposed to be a, essentially a, you know, a single-term type application. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, then in, if, in, in that case, yes, if there is no surface flinger on the phone, then yes. Can do it. It'll take some time because also right now it is an x86 project. We will need to add the ARM stuff to Shaftesbury to get that to work. Um, but yeah, should be possible. Is it uh, the same things? Yeah. Uh, oh. uh, do you think this uh, kind of thing could upset some application developers because it seems like I'm uh, useful base for for instance for feeding applications fake information or uh, cheating out games or debugging them. Uh. Um, well, <laughs> right. So Hashlick is not very useful for that sort of spying on applications type stuff. So I wouldn't think that Hashlick itself would annoy people. The Android emulator itself mm. is much more useful for that uh, because it has all the debugging tools that are already there because it's part of the SDK and it's supposed to be used for that. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I wouldn't think that we would have that issue, <laughs> at least. On, on purely on a political level, at least. <laughs> um, on porting to new devices, is it a similar to monkey slash device that's nope. side in Monaco? Nope. Uh, 
that's the thing. Because we don't use the hardware extraction stuff, we are just using system libraries. Uh, we're using the system uh, EGL, we're using system OpenGL, everything runs on Mesa. Uh, so, and that's, that's really the problem that you have with porting Ubuntu Touch and all the other libraries based things to new devices is that essentially you need to modify libraries to work with the odd quirks that exist in the various drivers. Um, and we don't have that. Uh, what we do have though is because it is Android, there are some fairly specific requirements to versions of specific libraries. Um, but most of that is something that we can deal with. Uh, and it is getting better as Android gets older. Uh, interestingly, they also fix a lot of this sort of um, hard coded library dependency type stuff inside the code, their own code base. So uh, I have a suspicion <laughs> that when we do upgrade to Android M, some of that will go away as well. So even less porting effort. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're slowly running out of time. Last question. So unmodified desktop Linux or unmodified Linux means my kernel doesn't need binder support? Unmodified Linux means you need to enable that standard option in your kernel. Sorry. <laughs> right now you need binder. Um, hoping to get rid of that at some point. Uh, so does a lot of other people. They actually want to get rid of it in Android itself. Uh, but they looked at KDBus and found out that KDBus is not an option. So, yeah. Um, but because obviously our requirements are somewhat smaller than, um, than what they have, we're not contacting the hardware directly. We're not, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff that we may very well be able to get rid of the binder dependency. Um, but yes, right now you need binder. All right. Thank you, Dan.